Well, it's been a couple of weeks since I've posted anything about my progress. I was away for a bit last weekend, so I didn't practice actually as much as I had been. But I'm back at it again with some even better lessons, that's for sure. I won't say I've progressed a whole lot. Hard to tell, you know. Um, things feel like I'm, I'm better, but, you know, it, it's probably negligible from many perspectives. Um, anyway, today I, I just wanted to do a few things, give a proper shout out to a couple of teachers of mine. Um, as mentioned in previous videos, really fortunate to have a team of, of teachers out in Connecticut. And uh, this week, uh, Austin posted a really helpful video for me anyways, uh, particularly around a tempo and beat. And so I've uh, made sure I've grabbed my trusty guitar toolkit here and uh, set a decent beat, pretty slow, and tried to follow Justin's uh, instructions, as you'll see here. What's up, Dean? Um, I'm just going to run through like the intro and then kind of the verse part. And um, I think a good way to get you started on learning the song is to count into playing the song. So like tap your foot or snap your finger or anything. Anything get the tempo of the song in your head. This way you could play the chord transitions and the song itself to a certain tempo. So you could be like, one, two, three, four. Lots, lots, lots more work for me to do there, but um, I really appreciate the fact that, of course, that Brant and the students are taking the time to teach me and others as well. Morgan made a great video this week as well, just clarifying a couple of new chords. Um, and the other teacher, again, that I mentioned before, but I went back to is Justin Guitar, and here's a little bit of me working with Justin. Three, four. Again, part of this project's goal was to help us think about who our teachers are and, and they don't have to be in the traditional sense and so uh, although I've never met Justin, Justin has no idea who I am, he's not personalizing his lesson for me, uh, the content that he's produced is extremely helpful and uh, you know as a, as a master guitar player he's, he's able to break down those skills pretty discreetly and, and really thankful for uh, Brant's students because while they're probably not quite as skilled as Justin, they have more recently learned a lot of these things and probably is easier for them to recall um, when they were struggling like I am, if they ever struggled this badly, uh, to, uh, to be able to share that. So I really, really appreciate that. And uh, just in thinking about um, this whole learning process, you know, I began to wonder if, if I'm going about it the right way I mean, traditionally, when we've taught things like music, it's been pretty structured. And uh, obviously, this is totally unstructured. I'm sort of trying to choose my own path, uh, having other people and other ideas fit into my schedule and my goals. And I can tell you right now that uh, Mrs. Sawatsky, my, 
my, my piano teacher probably wouldn't have been this open to a personalized learning experience. Oh, can you hear the dog? Someone's at the door. Hold on a second. I just came back from playing squash, so I'm a little sweaty. But I will continue on with my thinking here. Um, so I was talking about traditional ways of learning instruments and, and this sort of uh, method where I'm customizing my learning. I, I don't know if it's the best. I don't know if it's the most efficient. And, um, you know, I don't know if I should, you know, go back and follow a very strict regimen of lessons and progressions. But, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy to do what I want to do in this case. So I guess that's part of it. I, I, but, but again, people may, would argue and say, and maybe you've had experiences where you've been, where you've learned an instrument maybe in two different ways or, or can, can kind of do a, do a personal comparison of those two methods. But, um, I just find it curious that obviously this isn't, this isn't the recommended way of learning. However, you know, lots of people we know now, um, are learning on their own. In fact, uh, my buddy had just been playing squash with his son is quite a good guitar player. And I asked, he said, just learned it online, uh, got a couple books and, and sort of plugged away. So, um, really, really, um, important to be able to do that in today's world. So that kind of wraps up uh, a lesson. I've got obviously a lot to practice, a lot to work on, but I feel fortunate with the teachers that I've had and the way that I'm, uh, the way that I'm learning. And, and you know, uh, again, thinking about a guitar, learning how to play guitar, there's not a lot of cognitive um, dissonance or, or, or cognitive learning in a sense. This is largely about practice and muscle memory. However, I mean, I am trying to understand chord progressions and there's so there's some learning that goes along there. But again, it's, it's, it's not complex learning in that same way. So I want to be clear that this kind of learning isn't the same thing as somebody learning, um, you know, an, an idea or, or, um, you know, an over, an overall principle or, or something. I'm not explaining that well, but we tend to be picking things that are skill based. And so there's a very uh, probably common commonalities between learning a skill and just learning in general, particularly when people are having issues of, uh, you know, understanding. I don't think that there's a problem with understanding what I have to do. It is a matter of practicing and uh, building upon things I've learned before and just getting better at them. So, you know, to be clear, it is a different kind of learning, no doubt, but I think a lot of the processes and struggles and challenges that you go through here, frustrations too, and just not being able to do what you want to do, I think are important to, to uh, take with you. So enough rambling. That is lesson number five, and uh, we will hopefully see you again next week. Okay.